Hello there! This is Lego Dynasty, and today I'm bringing you guys my review of the Lego Creator NASA Apollo 11 Lunar Lander. It is set at number 10266, comes with 1,087 pieces, and is rated ages 16 and up. Now this set is a retired set, as it retired in December 2023, but when it was first released, uh, it retailed for $99.99, and in Canada for $129.99. Now without further ado, let's get into this set starting with the box. Taking a look at the box, you have what I think is a really awesome box art, and you know, it's definitely great that the set was 16 plus, uh, as I believe it was released around the time that we had, you know, 18 plus style box arts, but this box art is just absolutely gorgeous. You have the moon with the lander, you can see Earth in the background, all looking very awesome here. Now this was launched as part of the 50th anniversary of the Apollo moon landing, uh, so that's why they created it. So I guess it technically came out slightly before, but if they released this as just an 18 plus set, I don't think the box art would do the set justice at all, because I just think this is absolutely gorgeous. You can see the fact that you can take the set apart into different sections. Uh, what You also have the uh, sort of piece count on the front there, which is definitely very interesting, but something they've done on Creator Expert uh, sets as well. Pulling the box around, you have some more nice imagery uh, showing all the sections you can take off, some of the nice detail and stickers that are included to add extra detail there. Again, another logo of Apollo 50th anniversary, the giant leap. Um, and yeah, that's pretty cool overall. Now take a look at the manual, and as you can see, this is one of the older style manuals that had the box art reprinted on the front, which uh, I just think is absolutely awesome. Like, definitely miss this. This set, you know, the fact that this set had it um, definitely is very nostalgic. And I got this set uh, right before it retired, so like they never changed uh, the manuals for it, even though it they probably could have. So definitely glad they didn't because it just it looks so good and definitely um, makes me wish we still had this on all of our manuals, just because I think it makes the set look much more premium of a product and. Yeah, it doesn't take away anything from a building experience. It's just the cover of a manual, but it just looks so much better. Now, what's nice about this set is that even though it's not a UCS set, it has a lot of great information on the Apollo 11 mission, the moon landing, etc. So very, very awesome to see there. Definitely, I assume was made in conjunction with NASA. Uh, all this information, just very cool and looks pretty awesome overall and just so much information in different languages as well as you can see so definitely nice there before you get into the actual building process now here are the extra pieces i was left with following the build so as you can see also had a brick separate included which makes a lot of sense but then also a nice collection of extra pieces here uh some gold pieces which is pretty nice and you know technic parts etc so all parts that you can just add to your collection for free. So definitely nice there. Take a look at our first minifigure. And as you can see, it is an astronaut. Now, obviously these are supposed to be Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, but there's nothing on the box to dictate which is which. There's only a slight difference in uh, their facial expressions on the minifigure heads, uh, but there's no uh, decal or any like printing that suggests which one is which, which is the only thing that I wish was included. As you can see, these are going to be basically the same. You just have this one with a sort of a larger smirk and then the lighter brown sort of eyebrows there. And uh, other than that, looks pretty good overall with the printing detail. As you can see, the typical astronaut uh, sort of uh, piece that they've created. And then grabbing the second minifigure, again, no identifying markings, uh, just a different minifigure head using a more classic Lego smiley face head, in my opinion, with just the extra... Slightly, like, I guess it's slightly different. It has the pupils as well. So overall, though, like, these are still great main figures. Just would have been nice if they went out of their way to say which one was which with, like, a marking of some sort. Uh, but uh, they decided not to do that. Now, take a look at the Lunar Lander itself. And I just got to say, this is an absolutely gorgeous set. Like, this is, to me, this is, like, the first diorama set um, that we got in sort of this style. And probably was potentially what inspired them to do these dioramas for other themes like Star Wars or Marvel now. So definitely pretty cool there. Like you have the black border all around. You have this printed piece that says Apollo 11 Lunar Lander, which is definitely very nice there. 
Um, there isn't too many printed parts, but that is one of them. So that's definitely pretty nice. A lot of the other details you see, like the flag, United States, even some detail on here are all stickers, unfortunately, which is probably my only disappointment. It would have been nice if some of these parts were printed here, but still nice that they included them. Flip and set around, you can see some of the nice detail there. And then even just some minor nitpicks of me, like being able to see this blue Technic piece. Uh, it feels like it should have just been a black Technic piece, uh, just so it looked a little bit nicer there to me personally. Uh, obviously, you can change it yourself if you wanted to, but uh, just on principle and what was included, that's how they had it. So overall, though, you can see some great, nice detail. You can also see the reflectiveness uh, of these gold sticker pieces. So definitely looks very nice. Um, just the only unfortunate thing is it had to be a sticker, obviously, just to get this effect. But it looks very nice, as you can see my hand uh, reflection there, and it just looks really awesome there. Now, one thing I want to mention is the set isn't really secured uh, to the base at all. Like, in fact, it's very easy just to lift it up. So, uh, basically, the main thing to keep in mind is if you have the set or even just are planning to get it, obviously, we're about to get it on the secondary market, uh, it's not fully secured, which is my one sort of concern. I wish, I wish they had it clipped in somehow because just picking up the set, you got to be careful because uh, it's obviously... Uh, has the potential to fall off otherwise but it's still a really unique design of how they did it so like you have these uh, sort of circle plates here that fit into these uh, little uh, like divots I guess in the build as you can see and that's where these parts here fit in so looks very nice and you can see the base itself where the lunar lander sort of lands with the you know mode being sort of uh taking uh like uh, getting some, I guess, damage is the only way to put it from the fire of the Lunar Lander landing. And moving the base aside, we'll take another look at the lander itself. And you see the overall great detail of the vessel. Now you do have some nice sort of play functionalities if you want to call it that. So right now you have this sort of clipped piece. So if you just lift it slightly uh, and then you can pull this down which reveals what I assume is the tape recorder there. So definitely pretty cool to have that detail. And this is one of the only other printed parts included in the set as well. So that looks pretty nice. And like I said, you can just pop that up. Now for uniformity's sake, not every part can come down. So like for instance, this one right next to it, uh, there is nothing there. Uh, but you can go down here and then lift up this section here as you can see like that, which I assume is supposed to be compartments to fit in, you know, uh, samples from the moon for them to take back to test. And then you can push it back inside just like so. And then even on this side as well, there is uh, no section for you to pull down either. So it's just the one uh, or the two sections, I guess, that can, you know, have you pull something down out of it. But it's still very cool nonetheless. Now, of course, you can detach the lander itself from the set uh, or the main base, I guess is the best way to put it. So you just pull up. And as you can see, very easy to do. Um, it's basically just a couple of clips there on the bottom, as you can see. And we can get a nice look at some of the sections um, just like that. And you can kind of get an idea of how it was built. So definitely looks pretty cool overall there. Uh, definitely pretty nice. Now getting a better look at the actual pod and it can actually come apart into different sections. So very easy as you can see. And you can actually fit in your two minifigures as you see these studs in there. So that's what I'll do just so we can see them inside. If I can fit them on the studs, there we go. And same with on the other side, just like that, as you can see. So you can have the characters right there, which looks pretty awesome, I have to say. And pretty nice that you can actually fit them inside there. Now, of course, there are some other details on the inside. So you have these compartments here, uh, as you can see, which looks pretty nice. And then also a, a nice sticker detail of some paneling. And there's just to show what it looks like on that side. And then same thing on this other section, you have some more nice sticker paneling, which looks pretty nice overall. 
uh, to sort of reenact, I guess, when, uh, And then on the other side, again, it's a little bit more basic. You have just some nice sticker detail of paneling uh, for them to, I guess, control. And then just like that, very easy to put back together and just as easy to reattach the vessel to the actual uh, lander itself. And to do that, you just, like I said, you have the clips there and then the sort of bars there. And you kind of just line it up and click it into place just like that and then you can also again land the actual lander onto the actual base uh, and quite simply to do that all you do is just place it sort of in place do you kind of have to move the actual pieces there just to get to fit perfectly uh, but overall it works quite well the lego creator nasa apollo 11 lunar lander is a fantastic set and definitely is a set that if you haven't picked it up, uh, if you can find it for a reasonable price on a secondary market, I would urge you to. Uh, personally, I love some of these, you know, Lego Creator Space sets. Uh, I only have this one, really. Uh, wanted to get some of the other ones, and maybe one day I'll be able to. But for now, I'm, this is basically it. And it's just a really cool set. Like, it's just, it's just cool to have, I think. And while I'm Canadian, I still think, like, the accomplishment was pretty impressive and to have it, you know, sort of immortalized in a way on a Lego set is pretty fun as well. But that's all my opinion. Let me know your thoughts on the NASA Apollo 11 Lunar Lander in the comments down below. Do you guys have the set or are you planning to pick it up on the secondary market? Please leave a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed and have a great day everyone.